of us know very well uh, from Institute of Theoretical Physics of Jagiellonian University. And he will tell us on his recent work on spectral dimensionality of quantum spaces slash space times. Yes, please start, Thomas. Mm. Thank you. So uh, how much time uh, do I have? Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 guess it's a, I, I guess it's about an hour. Okay. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> let me first thank for an opportunity to, to speak here in, in Warsaw, uh, even if only metaphorically. Uh, what I'm going to present is a much less rushed version of the talk that I gave at the online conference of the Polish Society on Relativity in September. And it is based on my recent paper with uh, Michał Eckstein, which also builds upon the earlier uh, results that we obtained separately with other people. I hope that you can see my cursor. Um, Could you move your cursor again, please? Yes, we see it, yes. Thanks. Um, in the first part, uh, after discussing some context and motivation, I'll describe uh, how the concepts of the spectral dimension and dimension spectrum arise, and what are numerous subtleties associated uh, with uh, using them. Uh, later, in the second part, uh, I'll move to two examples, or actually families of examples, both of which uh, are non-commutative spaces, a quantum deformed sphere with three different possible locations, uh, and the quantum deformed Minkowski space, uh, also with three different uh, Laplacians in one plus one, two plus one, and three plus one topological dimensions. I hope to manage finish sufficiently early so that I have some time to spend on the conclusions <clears throat> in the summer. Um, so the whole topic uh, is rooted in the research uh, concerning the still unknown quantum theory of gravity. And one of the simplest things that one may uh, consider within this research uh, is what would be uh, uh, the quantum version of space-time, of static space-time, uh, assuming that uh, uh, such uh, static, such a quantum space-time exists that uh, uh, in the quantum theory, space-time doesn't de disintegrate into kind of space-time atoms or even some something less uh, obvious. Uh, but still, even if this is the case, we could consider uh, some effective level at which the notion of space-time is preserved, but it's no longer classical. And then, uh, some uh, the most basic questions that one could ask is uh, what would be the fate of symmetries uh, in such a space-time, quantum space-time, as well as uh, what would be its effective dimension. And namely, uh, assuming that uh, in the quantum theory, space-time exhibits wild uh, quantum fluctuations, so that it is in some way, in some sense, fractal. Uh, and fractality is uh, associated with, um, with some change in the dimensionality of a given um, <coughs> uh, geometrical structure. Uh, one, <coughs> one may imagine that space-time itself also undergoes some uh, dimensional flow in the ultraviolet. Mm, and indeed, uh, as it was first observed in causal dynamical triangulations uh, 
by uh, Yurkevich, Albjorn, and Lowell, uh, and later in other approaches to quantum gravity, including Hosea Lifshitz gravity, uh, asymptotic safety scenario, causal sets, uh, as well as there were some um, <clears throat> partial results in, in the spin form models and con uh, concerning the kinematical states of loop quantum gravity. Uh, it was observed that indeed there is, uh, um, it seems that there is uh, uh, such a change in the dimensionality, uh, which can be observed using some notion of dimension. And in general, there are different such notions possible to, to define both from the mathematical and physical perspective. Uh, a quite recent review by Stephen Kalip which I mentioned here below, discusses in, in, in particular what are different possible definitions of dimension that one can use. And one of the most popular uh, so far has been the spectral dimension, which uh, um, was used to, to obtain the results that I mentioned here for these um, different quantum gravity models. Um, also in some of them, also some of our notions of dimensionality uh, were studied. Uh, and almost always, uh, and it's, it's, it's a common prediction of these very, very uh, diverse models um, that the uh, dimension uh, reduces and it, it decreases. Uh, and most often uh, in the UV, we observe the dimension to the number of two which coincidentally is uh, the number of dimensions uh, for which gravity becomes perturbatively renormalizable. Um, and similar um, dimensional flow has also been observed for models of quantum gravi gravity in, in, uh, uh, for the number of topological dimensions different than four in particular in three dimensions, which are um, often studied as a toy model. Um, and in the context uh, yeah, in, uh, of um, non-cumulative geometry, which is also um, quite conspicuous in, in quantum gravity research, I mean, in different approaches to quantum gravity, uh, in a way that seems uh, um, uh, that seems justified, uh, a kind of non-cumulativity of space-time coordinates emerges. Uh, we expect this because non-cumulativity is is a feature of of quantum um, physics in general, uh, as well as uh, there are also some approaches to, to quantum gravity, or at least some uh, intermediate uh, description, effective description of quantum gravity in which uh, non-commutative geometry uh, is uh, the um, crucial ingredient. Uh, however, uh, as it was first defined by Kohn and Moscovici, um, in the context of, of non-commutative geometry, it's more most rigorous uh, or maybe most refined spectral approach. Uh, the heat trace, which is associated with a spectral dimension as I will uh, describe uh, later, is uh, characterized not just by, by this single function depending on scale, or a single number, but a whole, in, general, in most cases, infinite set of numbers, which is called the dimension spectrum. Uh, and this uh, was in particular uh, studied by my co-author. Uh, and while I had some experience in studying the, the spectral dimension, dimension, and because of that, we, we joined our forces trying to find out in which way the spectral dimension and dimension spectrum 
either contrast or maybe complement each other. Uh, uh, and also, um, this is not uh, only relevant uh, from the perspective of, um, of this description of quantum space-time, but also problems uh, uh, like the vacuum energy density, Casimir effects, uh, entanglement entropy, because this uh, um, uh, heat trace uh, machinery is also employed uh, there in, in these problems, which are uh, real, some are related uh, to quantum gravity, some may be also considered outside of the realm of, of quantum gravity, quantum field theory in general. And here I also mentioned one, one paper co-authored by me in which we uh, discuss uh, this landscape of quantum gravity models uh, and how, how we can try to find relations between these different, different approaches to quantum gravity, which sometimes seem unrelated. But uh, one of the things that in some way shows us possible connections is well, the spectral dimension or in general results for, for the effective dimensionality of uh, space-time. Now, uh, moving on um, to spectral dimension. Spectral dimension, uh, in a way, uh, combines these two characteristics of, of uh, possible definitions of uh, the effective dimension, or in general, the dimension of some space, uh, it can be either uh, motivated by mathematical considerations or this spectral geometry or by uh, physical, um, uh, physical uh, model, which is a, a fictitious diffusion process uh, going on, on, on on the space under consideration. Namely, if we have a, a Riemannian manifold uh, with some metric, and if it has the topological dimension D, uh, then uh, we consider the diffusion process described by the ordinary heat equation uh, with an initial condition. Uh, and the diffusion process uh, in, is controlled by the Laplacian, which uh, in the simplest case is just a uh, um, contraction of two derivatives. Uh, but in general, it may be a different, it may be some more complicated operator, differential operator or, or a pseudo differential operator. Um, while uh, sigma is, um, it's a parameter, and it's the auxiliary time, uh, which, uh, which is uh, the parameter that can be uh, interpreted as, uh, as the scale at which we probe a given manifold. So in this way, uh, yeah, the spectral dimension uh, allows us to, to to check how the dimension depends on scale. Uh, the diffusion uh, governed by this equation is characterized by the average return probability. That is the probability that the diffusion returns to the same point uh, after time sigma, or otherwise, or, I mean, uh, it, it's also called the heat trace. Uh, and uh, in this case, when, when we have a, a manifold, uh, if it's um, non-compact, we, we have to choose some fiducial volume so that it's not, this expression is not divergent. Um, 
And then the circular dimension of the, of the given manifold can be extracted using this formula with a logarithmic derivative uh, over logarithm um, of sigma. And in particular for the Euclidean space, we recover the well-known um, the, the topological dimension. Um, the heat trace itself uh, extends uh, from, from a Laplacian acting on a manifold to a closed operator in a separable Hilbert space. Um, so in general, it's defined as the trace over the operator E to minus sigma T, which is called the heat operator, this exponent. And we take the trace of it and uh, this can be expressed in terms of the series over the eigenvalues of the operator. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, in order to define it in the first place, this heat uh, operator needs to be trace class. Um, it needs to belong to the class of operators for which uh, such uh, an operator can be defined, which is not always the case. Um, moreover, uh, uh, on a non-compact manifold or for the Hilbert space with a non-compact algebra of observables, we have to introduce uh, a cutoff in the IR <clears throat> uh, so that this uh, expression, uh, this, this quantity is not divergent. And then this uh, cutoff may either factor out or lead to some IR UV mixing which may be uh, undesired. Um, then next point is that the order of the, of the, of the operator uh, may be different than two, than uh, as it is for, for the usual Laplacian. And then actually we should modify the definition of a spectral dimension uh, to take into account this um, this order different from, from the standard value of two. Uh, but then uh, the order of the operator is uh, in general an ambiguous concept for, for an abstract operator. Uh, and also, as I will show in the example of the Kapankowski space, um, it leads to um, some, some issues that uh, are uh, still not completely understood. Uh, there are also other um, issues that we have with the spectral dimension. Uh, if the classical limit of space-time is compact or carved, then in the case when the kernel of the operator T is trivial, the spectral dimension diverges in the IR. So in order for, for it to model uh, the, the dimension, the actual dimension of, of space-time um, over the whole range of scales, we need to combine it with a classical prof profile in the IR regime. Uh, if the kernel of this operator T is non-trivial, then uh, uh, in contrast, uh, the spectral dimension decreases, decays to zero, uh, which can be uh, uh, either remedied by, by this, uh, ensuing with a classical profile, or uh, there is also an alternative um, quantity that may be used instead, which is called the spectral variance defined in this way. Uh, <clears throat> if the full spectrum of the operator T, I mean the whole set of eigenvalues is unknown, the spectral dimension can be approximated using a heat trace expansion 
but only sufficiently deep in the UV regime. And this is one of the issues that we will discuss in a, in a follow-up paper to, to this paper on, on which uh, my today's talk is mainly based. Um, and finally, as, as you could uh, already notice, and uh, since the spectral dimension is defined for Riemannian manifolds uh, or um, in this um, more general case uh, in the, um, for, for Hilbert spaces in which we, we don't have uh, uh, in a Lorentzian structure, then uh, in order to apply it in the quantum gravity uh, context, uh, one first has to perform the Vick rotation, which is uh, for, for these abstract operators, something uh, in general um, problematic. Uh, and now moving on to, to what I mentioned uh, in the introduction that the uh, spectral dimension comes from the heat trace. Uh, I mean, apart from the fact that uh, it's, I already showed uh, in the context of, of this um, uh, fictitious diffusion process uh, that uh, is defined as, as the logarithmic derivative of this um, heat trace. Uh, we can uh, look at this heat trace uh, and then uh, extract the information about the spectral dimension from, from it. Um, and in particular, uh, the heat trace uh, may possess the asymptotic expansion at sigma equal to zero. I mean, the expansion that is valid uh, only in the limit of sigma going to zero. So only in the UV uh, and such an expansion for a, a pseudo differential operator on a manifold uh, has this form where uh, the coefficients, we have two families of coefficients, A, A K and B, L. Um, and in particular, if T is, is not a pseudo differential, but a differential operator and coefficients, uh, uh, AK are given by integrals of the geometric invariants uh, of the manifold, or if we consider a vector bundle over a manifold, then uh, invariance for this vector bundle. Uh, so in particular, A0 is proportional to the volume, <coughs> uh, and A2 is proportional to this uh, integral over the Ricci curvature, while uh, uh, higher coefficients uh, involve uh, contractions uh, of the uh, Riemann tensor um, integrated over, um, which are of higher and higher order. Uh, while in this particular case, all coefficients be vanish. Uh, and what is also uh, important to mention again, is that if the manifold M is non-compact, the expansion coefficients will generally depend on the cutoff. Um, the more general case uh, for abstract operators in Hilbert spaces, the asymptotic expansion uh, for, for unbounded operator T in a separable Hilbert space uh, has this form. So it's a, it's a triple sum. But uh, the structure of this triple sum, it's, uh, if, you, if you look at it for a moment, it's uh, easy to understand. I mean, the sum over n counts, uh, um, uh, is sum over um, powers of logarithm of sigma. So P is the maximal uh, power of logarithm of sigma that occurs in the expansion. While the over two sums uh, are sums over labels um, uh, of these numbers Z. I mean, Z is uh, in general a complex number uh, with two labels, K and M. So, there, so there's a whole family 
in general, in, in finite family of, of complex numbers, which are exponents uh, yeah, in the powers of sigma. And this set of numbers is what we call the dimension spectrum. This is the set of all these exponents, Z uh, with labels K and M, while uh, P plus one is uh, upper bound of the sum uh, regarding the logarithmic uh, uh, contributions is called the order of dimension spectrum. Mm. Now we may uh, define the maximal real dimension, I mean, the supremum over uh, elements of a um, dimension spectrum uh, with uh, taking the real parts of, of these um, exponents. Uh, and if such a supremum exists, then the usual limit of a spectral dimension, the limit exists, uh, is simply this uh, maximal dimension uh, multiplied by the order of the operator t, as uh, I showed before, this order is something that appears in the definition of a spectral dimension. Uh, one of the main reasons that this uh, spectra, that this dimension spectrum is interesting is uh, that uh, um, imaginary parts of elements of a, a complex spectrum, when they uh, non-vanish, when we have elements in the complex spectrum that are not purely real, uh, then the heat trace um, uh, contains the log periodic oscillations in the UV. And these oscillations can uh, in turn be observed in the spectral dimension if we, if we look close enough. Uh, the dimension spectrum uh, is uh, on the other hand, something static. It doesn't depend on scale. It actually tells us about the um, uh, small scale behavior of the um, heat trace. So the UV regime. Uh, in general, as I, as I mentioned, the existence of uh, asymptotic expansion for heat trace is, is no problem. Uh, and sometimes it's actually easier to apply the Mellin transform, which is a kind of a integral transform like the Fourier transform defined in this way that we have this uh, power here multiplying uh, the function that we want to transform and under this Mellin transform, uh, the heat trace becomes uh, the gamma Euler function, you know, the usual ordinary generalization of the factorial times the spectral zeta function, uh, which is the trace over such an operator, T2 to, to the power of minus S uh, for uh, for very large uh, real parts, uh, real part of, of S. And uh, both, um, but this can be analytically continued to the whole complex plane. Um, and then poles of the function gamma times uh, the spectral zeta function correspond to elements of dimension spectrum. In such a way, uh, that um, uh, the term of order um, logarithm sigma to the power n minus one times sigma to the power of minus z uh, corresponds to a pole of order n at, uh, at z 
at point Z in, in the complex plane. Uh, the the com uh, this uh, concept of a dimension spectrum that we consider here is actually a um, simplified notion of a more general concept of a dimension spectrum for a spectral triple. As uh, you might have heard, uh, in the context of spectral geometry, uh, the object of interest is the spectral triple, which is composed, uh, which, which consists of an algebra of observables represented on some Hilbert space and uh, what is uh, called a Dirac operator, which is an unbounded operator acting on, on the Hilbert space. And then uh, the spectral, the dimension spectrum uh, is, is the sum uh, of dimension spectra for the whole family of uh, operators um, that, I, that are obtained from, from the operator D by dressing it uh, with quantum fluctuations. Um, so uh, in particular, if we have, uh, if we have more, I mean, Let's say spectra triple describing the standard model on, uh, on space time, then this spectral dimension, the dimension spectrum uh, in this case depends not only on the on gravity but also on these other fields. But this is something that we don't that we didn't consider. In this um, uh, in this work, we limited our, we were restricted ourselves to simpler uh, simpler considerations. Uh, and now uh, let me move on to two types of examples that we considered. The first one is the quantum sphere. Um, actually, um, there are different concepts of the quantum sphere, but uh, and this particular one that we consider is known as the Podlesch quantum sphere. Uh, and uh, it is a homogeneous space of a Q deformed group SU Q2. And it's a, it's a def deformation of a uh, uh, unitary, special unitary group. Uh, and uh, it's described by a star algebra with the generators A, B, and B star. Um, these are technical details. Uh, what is important is that the deformation is uh, controlled by the parameter Q, which belongs to the range 0 to 1. Uh, and the classical limit is Q going to 1. And then we recover the algebra of continuous functions on, on the ordinary sphere. Uh, the algebra uh, can be represented on either of uh, SU2 Hilbert spaces. Uh, and then uh, we may consider either the, the usual scalar Laplacian acting in this first representation or the spinorial Laplacian acting in the other one. Um, so this is in the classical case. Yeah? And now in the quantum case, um, there are at least three different possibilities. Uh, the second and third are, are quantum versions of a spinorial and a scalar Laplacian. While the first one that we call the simplified Laplacian uh, is the square of a so-called simplified Dirac operator, uh, which acts on basis states uh, in, in this representation here in the following way. Uh, this uh, case is ill-defined in the classical limit, but uh, is, is interesting for reasons that I will mention in a moment. Uh, the spinorial Laplacian 
uh, which is given by the square of a full Dirac operator acts in the following way. Uh, and the scalar Laplacian, which is defined as the first Casimir of the Hopf algebra, uh, which is a quantum version of a, a algebra. Which is, so if you perhaps not, not all of you know this uh, concept of a Hopf algebra, I will uh, mention it again. I actually, so there are some extra slides concerning of algebra in the case of um, kappa minkowski space. Uh, so uh, this is a quantum version of the algebra, which has some features of the algebra and some features of a group. Uh, and the scalar Laplacian is uh, defined by the first Casimir and acts in, in the following way. Uh, these are um, technical details. What is important from our point of view is are the results for a spectral dimension and dimension spectrum that I will show in a moment. Mm. And now in order to, to study the spectral dimension dimension spectrum in this case, we, we start with a heat trace. Uh, and here in order to not put too many formula here, uh, I do not show the, the the heat trace, the heat trace expansions, but uh, in them there appear you know, the same, uh, the same uh, quantities as here in the expressions for the spectral emission. Uh, and what is uh, important to mention uh, is that uh, in this case for the quantum sphere. Um, the tool that we use uh, is this Mellin transform and the spe spectral zeta function that I mentioned. Uh, this is a general more difficult case of the, of the Kappa Minkowski case that I will discuss later. Uh, so, in particular, for the uh, simplified Laplacian, it turns out that uh, the uh, heat trace expansion is not just asymptotic, but it's actually exact, uh, which is uh, quite quite surprising. Maybe uh, at least it seems to us surprising. Uh, and then the, the dimension spectrum can be calculated. And it's given by this quite complicated formula, where g and f are certain bounded periodic uh, functions. Uh, and R is uh, uh, convergent series. It's a kind of reminder. Uh, while there are no exact formula for, for over Laplacians, it turns out that uh, the spectral dimensions in this case in the UV can be expressed in terms of the spectral dimension for the simplified Laplacian. Uh, in, in the for, for the spinor Laplacian, it's just straightforward. Is this spectral dimension plus O big O of sigma? While for the scalar Laplacian, uh, there's a necessary rescaling uh, of sigma, and instead of uh, of Q, here appears the square root of Q. And the next order is logarithmic. Uh, uh, in, in the definition of a spectral dimension, as I mentioned, the order of the operator is relevant. Uh, and what is the order of the operator is, uh, is not clear um, in the cases of a simplified and uh, scalar Laplacian, but for, for the spinorial Laplacian, it can be argued that uh, the order is two. And since they are related to each other by these uh, expansions, we can safely uh, um, assume that the order is two in all cases. Uh, both uh, the spectral dimension for the simplified and spinorial Laplacian diverge in the IR. Uh, and so they little differ in general. Um, and because of that, 
there is no necessity to show it separately. I just show the scalar, uh, the results for the scalar and spinorial Laplacian. So here on the left hand side, for, for the particular value of Q for the deformation parameter, uh, I, we compare the, this uh, spectral dimensions for quantum Laplacians and for classical Laplacians. As I mentioned um, earlier, uh, because of this issue with the kernel of the operator, the spectral dimension, even in the classical case, doesn't behave uh, well in the, infra, in the infrared. I mean, it diverges uh, in the case uh, of uh, spinoral Laplacian and decays in the case of, of the scalar. Uh, and the quantum, the, um, quantum dimensions of the quantum cases differ in the IR in the same way. While in the UV, we observe these oscillations that I mentioned that, I, uh, um, that corresponds to the presence of uh, imaginary terms in the uh, dimension spectrum that I will show in a moment. Uh, on the right hand side, I show um, the example of uh, the scalar Laplacian, how uh, this uh, dimension spectrum depends on the uh, deformation parameter controlling the quantumness uh, level uh, of, the, of the quantum sphere. And here you can see that uh, it, um, it little differs uh, from the classical case if, uh, if we are close uh, to the classical limit. And the oscillations start to be visible only for only deep in the quantum regime. And actually, uh, I do not show here, but in our paper, there is a plot where we show how these oscillations extremely rapidly decrease with a growing deformation parameter, which is the reason, uh, perhaps, why they were overlooked in the past. Uh, the paper uh, by Dario Benedetti, in which he considered the, the scalar Laplacian only, uh, he he didn't notice. He wasn't aware, apparently, on the existence of the oscillations. Um, <clears throat> now, the dimension spectra. Uh, here on the, on the first plot for the um, classical case for for both uh, scalar and spinorial Laplacian, they are the same. They're just um, integers uh, lower or equal to one. Uh, <clears throat> and because of the presence of this uh, order factor, if it has to be multiplied by two, so the maximum number is, is the, uh, the topological dimension two. However, in the quantum case, it turns out that for all Laplacians, the maximal real part of the, um, the dimension spectrum is zero. So these quantum spheres are effectively zero dimensional in the UV, and this is what what you could see in these plots. Uh, the spectra, the dimension spectra for the spinorial and scalar Laplacians are identical, but uh, as, uh, as you could see here on the plot, the dimension, the spectral dimensions are not, I mean, they do not coincide and actually they behave completely different in completely different ways in the uh, infrared. Uh, and these different uh, uh, symbols that are used uh, are reflect the fact that uh, in, in this um, spectral zeta function picture, uh, 
uh, these are poles of different orders. Uh, and here for, for both, I mean, for all of these three uh, quantum Laplacians, the maximal uh, order of a pole is free. So the, the, um, um, so we maximally have the third order. Uh, in the order of dimension spectrum is free, so we maximally have the second power of logarith because this um, order of dimension spectrum is maximal power plus one, uh, as I mentioned. Um, okay, now um, maybe I was speaking a bit too slow. I have to speed up a bit. Uh, the Kappa Minkowski space is another example that we considered that uh, was also uh, um, first studied for one particular Laplacian numerically by Dario Benedetti. Um, and later it was studied by me and Michele Arzano for different possible choices of the Laplacian and in different numbers of topological dimension. Um, uh, and um, and some results, some some of uh, my results in this paper with Michael Arsena were numerical, while others were anal analytic. Uh, and now I will actually have analytic results in all cases, because uh, they turned out to be not so difficult to obtain. So kappa minkowski space is the space-time that is covariant under the action of a um, kappa Poincare algebra, which is uh, an example of a Hopf algebra, uh, this, this generalization of the concept of algebra that I mentioned, uh, uh, for the Poincare algebra. Yeah? So it's, it's a quantum different version, specific quantum different version of the Poincare algebra. And time and space uh, and spatial coordinates of this kappa Minkowski space satisfy the following commutation relations so that, uh, I mean, this is one of possible versions uh, that the non-commutativity is only between time and space. There can be also a deformation of the space-like or light-like direction, but these ones are uh, less interesting and less studied. Uh, so these uh, coordinates span the Lie algebra which is called the abelian nilpotent algebra of N. And it's actually a subalgebra of a one dimensional higher Lorentz algebra. And uh, this algebra in turn, in turn generates the group whose elements are the ordered exponentials of algebra elements. Uh, so for example, we could choose such ordering, such an ordering. I mean, different traces of an ordering correspond to different bases. Uh, and then uh, this, um, these elements of a group uh, form uh, the momentum space corresponding to Kaplan-Minkowski Kaplan space. Uh, calculations are in, in our case of interest are simpler in the classical coordinates, which are introduced in the following way. And these coordinates live on a hyperboloid in uh, Minkowski space of one dimension more. Uh, or actually, it's, uh, it's a Decitor space, um, strictly speaking, half of Decitor space. Uh, this is something that was first observed uh, by Professor Kowalski Glickman. Uh, the heat kernel can be expressed. Uh, via the non commutative Fourier transform in the following momentum space representation with some non-trivial measure. Uh, and the momentum space version of the Laplacian. Uh, and, and the kappa Minkowski space is actually non-compact. So uh, this is something that we didn't take into account in this paper with Michele Arzano. Uh, with Michal Eckstein, we analyzed this issue on the basis of some results by, by Marco Matas, uh, discussions with Bruno Jochum. Uh, and it turned out that actually um, 
uh, regularization factorizes in this case. So this is why uh, our, my, my previous results were correct. Uh, but this is a, a, a special case. I mean, that, that in the Kaplan-Koski space, actually, it doesn't matter that uh, space is not compact uh, from the point of view of a spectral dimension and dimension spectrum. Mm. Uh, there are uh, at least three possible applications that one may consider here. The bicovariant one is uh, determined by the bicovariant differential calculus. So this is a differential calculus which is covariant both under the action of the algebra and co-algebra. Uh, so in total, Hopf algebra, this uh, kappa Poincare Hopf algebra. Uh, so it's quite natural uh, Laplacian. A different one is the, um, here we are obviously for the purpose of the calculation of spectral dimension, consider the Euclidianized versions of Laplacians. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, Laplacians, not Galan versions. Uh, so uh, this one uh, is the simplest Casimir of a kappa Poincare algebra, and actually it's related to the previous one. And the relative locality of Laplacian is motivated to uh, uh, the current incarnation uh, of this approach to quantum gravity, in which uh, Kappa Minkowski space is most considered, which is known as a relative locality approach. Uh, and and uh, this previous incarnation, as if I may say so, was the doubly or deformed special relativity. So here, uh, the object of interest is the momentum space. So the Laplacian. Uh, is given by the square distance along geodesics. Um, it looks this way. Uh, the spectral dimensions, uh, and here uh, for Kaplan-Minkowski space, the heat trace can be calculated exactly in, in all cases. Uh, and so the spectral, for the spectral dimension, in all cases, we have analytic exact expressions. Uh, there are, in the case of a bicovariant Laplacian, given by quite complicated expressions involving the error function and the three comic confluent hypergeometric function. And for the relative locality Laplacian, I do not show the formula, but they also involve uh, the error function. While in the bicross product case, uh, the expressions are simpler, just the uh, rational function here, for, uh, I mean, I, I'm writing in uh, no cases this in this way to separate the infra the ultraviolet limit from the uh, from the remaining part uh, of the function. Um, so there is uh, are this modified Bessel functions here, while in one plus one dimensions it's actually constant. Uh, and uh, at small scales we observe the dimensional drop for the bicovariant Laplacian to one dimension less uh, than the topological dimension. Uh, and uh, divergence, oh, I'm sorry, the rising spectral dimension in the UV for the uh, by cross product Laplacian, which uh, is twice the number of space dimensions. Uh, and uh, the dimension diverges for the relative locality of Laplacian. Uh, Dominic, you have about five minutes left. Okay, sorry. Um, and the, the large case, we always recover the, the correct um, value, um, classical value. So this, this is what I said, but just depicted on the plots. And here, um, uh, in all cases, we, for these results, we assume that the mm, order of, a, of the Laplacian is two. However, looking at the uh, expressions for Laplacians, one could see that, um, that for the by cross product Laplacian, this is actually what, uh, from the perspective of these coordinates of order one and uh, while the leading order 
in the expansion of a uh, last Laplacian is logarithmic. So it's effectively like order zero. And if we uh, use this instead and assume that actually the order of the operator depends on the deformation parameter in such a way and that in the um, classical limits, it's uh, equal to two, then in principle, all of these uh, functions could be superimposed over each other. However, the spectral dim the dimension spectra would still differ because I mean there are, there are just uh, sets with different number of elements which cannot be made to coincide in any way. And for the relative locality, Laplacian the, spect the dimension spectrum doesn't even exist due to the divergent factor in the heat trace. And so just to to, to summarize. Um, uh, the, um, these are actually some things that I already mentioned that uh, there may be some uh, coincidence uh, for the dimension spectrum for different Laplacians, but then they will dimension, uh, then the spectral dimensions would differ or vice versa. So in this way, these two, two these two notions of a spectral dimension, dimension spectrum complement each other. Uh, while uh, um, the, um, the order of dimension spectrum tells us about the ultraviolet uh, behavior, the spectral dimension in particular for the um, uh, quantum sphere, we have this leading logarithmic contribution and for uh, these two Laplacians and Kappa Minkowski, we have logarithmic contributions, uh, the second order. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, at these places in the expansion that are shown here. Uh, so it's uh, interesting to, to look for some features that are independent on the choice of Laplacian that tells us something about quantum space itself and not quantum space plus uh, a Laplacian. And such features are the presence of os oscillations on a quantum sphere um, and the lack of them uh, on Kappa Minkowski. Because on Kappa Minkowski, all these uh, elements of uh, dimension spectra are real numbers, actually rational uh, numbers. Uh, so, uh, and from the plots as well, you can see if you could uh, zoom in that the oscillations are absent. So this is unclear whether uh, this is because quantum sphere is compact and this is some kind of uh, IRUV mixing effect or uh, um, simply uh, kappa Minkowski space is less quantum, this has maybe less fractal structure. Uh, moreover, in all cases on the quantum sphere, mm, the maximal order of poles is, is the third order, and actually such uh, high order uh, of the uh, dimension spectrum uh, was observed on spaces with conical um, defects. So mm, by analogy, you could Suppose that the uh, quantum sphere is something very, very singular. Uh, while uh, for two of the Laplacians for, the, for which the dimension spectrum exists on Kappa Minkowski in, uh, in two plus one dimensions, um, we have second order pores, poles only in two plus one dimensions, uh, at least. Uh, considering this um, dimension that we studied. So this seems like a distinguished case for Kappa Minkowski, but maybe uh, it may also happen that this also appears for other positive values of, of the number. I mean, all over even values, non odd values of the number of space dimensions for Kappa Minkowski, but we didn't study this. And finally, uh, this uh, here are uh, I'm actually repeating repeating some things that I said before. Uh, 
So the spectral dimension does not see, uh, does not easily see because we, you need to zoom in uh, maybe to see these uh, oscillations while in the spe dimension spectrum they are visible immediately. And these oscillations uh, are uh, an effect that uh, in some papers was studied, uh, I mean, uh, also, I mean, not, not only in the context of this spectral dimension, but in general, in the context of discrete scale invariance without even referring to, to the heat trace. Uh, it was observed that they may possibly affect the cosmic microwave background or stochastic background of gravitational waves or thermo thermodynamics of photons. So this may be uh, an effect that is uh, in principle observable. Mm. While the dimension spectrum doesn't capture the, the infrared limit of, the, of dimensionality, in contrast to the uh, spectral dimension, uh, and we need to to know this dependence on scale of the dimension in order to track the emergence of this. Uh, um, quantum, perhaps fractal features in the UV, uh, and something that needs to be better understood is um, how how these different types of fractality are related to these different possible uh, features that uh, dimension spectrum. Inspector I mentioned may exhibit. Mm. And uh, this, this uh, yeah, and finally, the last thing, uh, this uh, idea that we could define the order of an operator that depends on the deformation parameter mm, uh, was uh, is something that we are not certain uh, whether it, uh, how much sense it makes. Uh, this was just to, to, to study whether in principle it could be possible to, uh, to introduce, the, to remove the discrepancy between the results for a spectral dimension for different Laplacians on, on Kapp and Koski, because uh, then we would have uh, a universal behavior independent on, uh, on the Laplacian. But still, as I mentioned, the dimension spectra would remain different. So it doesn't mean that uh, there is no difference for, between choosing uh, different Laplaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I should finish, right? Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Tomek, for your very nice seminar. And uh, uh, now we can start discussion. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't, I don't see any questions, any follow up questions. So uh, I think it's time for to thank the speaker again. And then we finish our seminar for